I know you said Monday you want to see Tanny Hill healthy, but at this point, with what you've seen out of Will, especially after a road environment last night, are you ready to name him maybe your starter? No, I'm not ready to do that yet. I um, think we'll have a conversation with the depth chart over the weekend, and we'll have a depth chart uh, or something close to it available You know, when we talk to you on Tuesday to, to be able to, to go through the moving parts of not only Ryan's health, but whatever there are going on on the offensive line, which which there is, you know, coming out of that game, um, which there would be like in the defensive secondary. So there'll probably be some some moving parts here over the weekend. When, when you make that decision, Mike, is it purely on who, assuming Ryan's healthy, is it purely on who's playing better right now or do you take into account things like Ryan's track record or Will's potential, things like that as well? Yeah, uh, I think with any position, uh, you look for, uh, you know, who gives you the best opportunity to, to win and where you're at and, and what's you know, best for the football team. So you know, we'll, we'll have those conversations um, over the weekend. We'll see where Ryan's health is. We'll see where, you know, some different guys are as health. But you know, we're always just trying to figure out what gives us the best chance to win, what, 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 what we can do to, to win a football game, especially one next week that's on the road. When you're looking at that equation, though, how much does future balance into it as well? Whereas, like, you know, obviously, Levis is a guy of the future, Tannehill is the now. How do you balance that? Um, and I think as a coach, you know, you're focused on, the, you know, the, 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 the football team. And, and that's, that's finding a way to win. Winning is – is critical. Uh, I think just, you know, just the way that everybody feels. You, you, the injury isn't as bad. You know, the bumps and bruises aren't as bad. Um, you know, just from everybody's attitude. I think that that's mo you have to focus on today and, and what's uh, what's best for us today. And then, obviously, on the other hand, there is a long-term implications for decisions that we make, whether that's. You know, looking at Kevin Byard and uh, moving him to, to Philly. Um, so I think that there is a balance there. You uh, will play last night. Mm, yeah. Again, when, when we lose, no, nobody did a good enough job. I think there were some, some, some good plays. I think that there were some, some decisions that, that we can't make, you know, in, in you know, throwing the ball into cover two. Uh, down the sidelines isn't something that is going to be very advantageous um, offensively if you're trying to take care of the football. Have you had a chance to check on Traylon this morning and how's he doing? He's communicated um, via text. I think he's on his way in. And uh, again, from what it looked like, I would say that that was probably uh, it's going to be as good of a prognosis uh, as what um, what it could have been you know just looking at the visual of all that and that's you know we understand what the the risks are involved and you know trailing sold out to, to make a play and unfortunately didn't but I'm, I'm hopeful and we're all hopeful that you know we'll, we'll get him back uh, you know as soon as possible his injury uh, I, I, he's in concussion protocol, um, you know, and then you know, there was a, a, a brief uh, loss of, of consciousness. That's why the, they reacted in the manner in which they did. It sounds like that everybody did exactly what they're supposed to do based on the protocol and, you know, making sure that uh, Traylon's uh, well-being was looked after as, as quickly and as uh, correctly as possible. Mike, what's happening that the run defense has not been as effective the last month or so as it was earlier in the year? Uh, well, there were moments, there are moments. If you look back in the, in the month and if you look back and say, you know, that, not that the quarterback doesn't count as rushing yards, right? But Lamar you know, had a couple and, and Ritter had, had some. So I don't think it was was awful. Last night was a different story. That was, you know, those were some base runs. We got to do a better job on the edge. The ball got on the edge, uh, creased us inside on on a couple traps. 
you know, that we have to fit better. We have to get off blocks. It's, it's no real secret. You know, if you're in split safety, you got to make the ball go lateral and you got to trigger and tackle. Uh, if you're in post safety, everybody's got a, got a gap that they have to, to be responsible for. And then once the ball declares, you know, being able to shed with, with good technique, have separation, not be on body, right? You play with separation. You know, there's, they're going to hold, right? They, and the only way that you ever get a call is by having some separation and being able to shed at the point of attack and allow them to see that. So I'm not, not saying that they were, they were holding us. It's just fundamental run defense that you, you set an edge. Everybody fits where they're supposed to fit. When, when the ball declares, you shed and you tackle. Is there a consistent missing element, like in the last four games in particular, you guys are giving up big numbers. Is there, is there one consistent thing in those four that you could point to that's not working or missing? Well, no, they got the edge twice. Right, there were two big ones on the edge. Uh, they they had two, uh, a 15 and a 14, uh, that that hit up the middle. So, um, you know, sometimes what happens is it's like, okay, I got to try to make a play, and I and I peek inside, or I get a little too tight, or I get knocked out of my gap, and then I got to show back up uh, instead of look. You know, instead of playing the block, sometimes you would look for the football. Uh, as opposed to just playing the block and, and knowing exactly where the ball's going based on what they're blocking and how they're blocking you. So a lot of it is, is fundamental. And uh, you, know, you just you have to be committed to, to doing it. You know, guy blocks you, you got to lock out, limit the space, right? Guy flashes, guy pulls, you got to fit the run, you got to go spill, you got to hold up on a double team. And that's that's what happens, and then all those things. Sorry. Before we start yelling at each other, go ahead, Joe. I was just saying, so more freelancing than there. Well, I, mean, I don't want to say like freelancing. It's just you can't really. I've tried to. I mean, I could go through one by one every double-digit run, and so whether that's a freelance, somebody being in the wrong spot, uh, somebody getting you know just blocked, right? They, they block you. Somebody getting knocked over on a double team, uh, us not fitting a gap scheme, somebody needing to spill, not getting it spilled, um, whether it's a toss crack and somebody's got to get up and in and somebody's got to overlap or miss tackle. Um, you know, th those, there's, there's a lot of those just things that come up. Um, so I would just wouldn't say that it's one particular thing based on the multitude of answers that I try to give you because those are all things that have, have, have happened. You've said several times during this drought that, that guys just need to win, haven't, haven't been winning. Jeff, we, we conveyed that answer to Jeff last night and a couple times through this. He, he doesn't seem accepting of, of that idea. Is, 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 there, is it hard for a guy like that to accept a, a verdict like that from his coach? Well, I don't or know. I just know that they can only – I'm sorry. Is there a matter of denial from him that that? That's I, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to speak for Jeff, but I will speak in, in pass rush. Right? They, you know, we've got five offensive linemen. There's four defensive linemen. They can double team one guy. We have to do a better job winning one on one. We have to do a better job of scheming, and when we scheme, we need to execute. When we work together with someone, we need to work and communicate what the game is, all these things that we've done and have done this year, have done in the past. Um, but it comes down to one-on-one, -on -one, you know, whether it's in coverage, whether it's in route, whether it's us blocking uh, and them rushing or, or us rushing and them blocking. Like that's, you know, if somebody gets the back, you got to win. If you're on the tight end, you got to win. Like these things have gone on uh, well before this year uh, in pro football. Simmons had mentioned also that Kenny Pickett, which we saw he was getting rid of the ball quickly, and sure. that factored into it. From your perspective, is that? I, I didn't track the, you know, I, mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't track the, I mean, they hit a couple plays down the field, like, but I, don't, I didn't track how long it came out. I mean, for the most right. part, it seemed like the I, I didn't, I didn't measure, you know, how, you know, a bunch of bubbles. I mean, again, that. Right, so the run reliefs that they have a run called and he bubbles it out there. But the, the third down is where you're going to be able to 
you have to be able to create uh, some, some impact, right? You have to be able to coordinate the rush and the coverage. And so to Jeff's point, that, you know, if they throw a bubble, like nobody's going to affect, you know, the, the quarterback uh, necessarily on, on, a, on a bubble pass outside. How did Ravens do, and how did Ravens do, and also the brief look you got at Jalen Duncan? Uh, I thought Dylan battled. I thought Dylan battled. Um, it's good to see him be able to be ready to go and take advantage of his opportunity um, and, and compete. You know, we'll keep working with Jalen and make sure that he's, you know, doing everything he can. And if he gets an opportunity here, you know, be ready to go. Mike, do you feel like this defensive coaching staff has the ability, like has the, the resources, the players to be able to turn the defense around? Do you think we have the resources, the players? We got the players that, you know, I mean, we've got, got guys we've made, uh, you know, we've committed uh, to, to some guys um, up front, you know, for, for long term. And, you know, again, they were, they were able to impact the game up front uh, against Atlanta. Um, you know, there's a fine line. You know, we've been talking with these guys this morning about, you know, how much do you scheme, right? How much do you scheme and how much do you want to, you know, get get good at some stuff so that, you know, you, you're able to adjust to multiple things that, that teams are doing uh, each and every week, right? Or if you're just going to hang your hat on, you know, a bunch of scheme, if that doesn't get executed, you know, pretty darn close to, to perfect, you may have some, some, some gaps and you may have some you know, opportunities for big plays. So I think it's a fine line between looking at who you have and, and trying to get really good at, at something and knowing where uh, your weaknesses are. And then there's also a, a good balance that, you know, let's, um, let's try to find some ways to, to scheme some things and, and to get a guy on the back on third down. Um, and then they have to win. You mentioned things like peaking and trying too hard to make a play when you look up front. It's not the first time you've mentioned that this year. Uh, I take it that's been a point of emphasis for you guys. So why do those things keep recurring if they've been probably a point of emphasis for you guys in game planning? That's not a point of emphasis in game planning. It's, uh, it's how you stop the run in the National Football League. Yeah. So. How often can you make that the message without the message seemingly translating into Well, results. there there are it's it's not um you know, it's not every single run, right? It's just the ones that 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 cost you and unfortunately sometimes those you know, guy makes a play, you know, when there is another mistake and uh you know, you, somebody can erase uh that mistake, you know. Looking at last night down the sidelines, you know. Weave might have got too tight on the on the tackle. Warren bounced it out. Uh, Terrell was going to fit inside, and then the ball bounced, and they they bumped into each other. Like I, you know, I don't I don't know what to tell you, other than to set the edge, stay there, uh, and, and let Terrell come in and uh, make a tackle and let everybody else swarm. So um, that's that's what happens. And then there's other runs where. Minus two or no gain, no gain. Uh, it's just you, you, you can't relax and you can't just say, okay, they're, they're not going to run it or they're, you know, we have to know what the call is and understand that, you know, we, just like I said, if it's a split safety defense, we have to do everything in our power to make the ball go lateral and, and then go run inside out and not let it crease us right down the middle. So... But it's it's good, you know. What I mean, again, it's it's the it's the X plays that we talked about: miss tackle, miss fit, you know, all those reasons. And so, we got to be better. Understanding the defensive issues that you, that you're talking about, still only gave up 20. I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. We got to score more points. I'm confounded by by the settling for field goals and the and the unwillingness to 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 push to to get touchdowns and the and the 
why why is there not why do you not talk more about the offense's inefficiency to get touchdowns and focus so much on the defense when they're only giving up twenty? Because I know what it's supposed to look like, in, you know, in all three phases. And um, again, in that particular situation, you know, I felt like we all felt like um, made a bad decision to go to hop on on first first down. Uh, miss Miss Tajay, you know, on second down, and instead of um, making making uh, what would have been a, a, a costly mistake, I felt like taking the lead on the road and ensuring that to happen uh, on third and ten was uh, was the right decision. And so that, you know, again, you can say, you know, settling. For, for not scoring touchdowns and just trying to weigh uh, the best way to try to win a football game. The, the best way that I felt like at that time, based on the circumstances, based on how the game was going, you know, there was other times we get the ball on the nine yard line and we gain five yards on first down. Probably if Derek stiff arms, the guy we probably score, we gained two yards on, on second down and ultimately scored on, on third down. But there were four, three plays of at least what you would call uh, efficiency. And again, they weren't at the end of the half. You know, so now you're, you know, sitting there, you know, in the, in the mid red or high red with third and 10. And I just felt like that was what was best for us at that time. So. Kajay gets twisted up on that play. It seemed like it was more on him. It was a decent, decent throw. And you say, well, we can't try that again because our rookie running back got tied up. No, I don't think that. You know, I think we need. I think we need to throw a better uh, ball um, at that point, and just you know, I think you know, whether it's Tajay, whether it's Will, um, I, I get when you lose your your everything that we do. Um, we we need to evaluate and and understand why at that particular time. Uh, I'm just telling you that I felt like that was what was best for the football team, and not. Not putting them in a third down pass rush mode and um, third and 10 and forcing the ball in there, making sure that, um, you know, we were smart with the ball. I'd love for you guys to look. It was a pretty favorable look. Um, it was a five man box. Should have gained much more than, than one yard. You know, there was five guys in there. We, we, should, we should block them and, and, and try to gain more yards than, than the one. It was a pretty favorable look to, to run even even on third and ten. Just just one more, if I may. The, the the idea that the two previous balls dictate that you don't give them a third chance to throw the ball. Are there other examples no. in a game where you say, "Oh, these two plays eliminate the possibility of a third play"? No, I just think that uh, in that situation, you you want to make sure. Again, we don't have a whole lot of time to to talk through things and say, "Hey, are you okay?" Um, you know, whether you decide to, to try to throw it into, you know, again, down the sidelines and cover two, uh, we, do, we don't want to do those types of things. And, you know, just just the way that that particular thing played out, that instance, you know, that that's what I decided to do. How much, how much of that is, how much of that is? put it right on, TyJ? Is that what you were saying on that play? I just think we need to find a way to complete that uh, pass to open guys. And, and Will knows that. And, and any quarterback would, would know that, whether Tajay got turned around or anything else. It, the execution um, has to be better in all, all three phases. It how, does. How much of that situation is a rookie quarterback in there that doesn't have a lot of experience versus maybe a veteran who, like, I don't know. I, don't, I can't, just can't tell you because there was, there was only one quarterback in there. He was making his in his uh, – sixth quarter of professional football. Um, we were going to take the lead and go to halftime and get the ball. And I'm sure would like to have not gone three and out uh, after we took it at halftime. But yeah, that was the decision that I made. You said that run should have gotten what? I, I'm saying when you run the football against five guys in the box, you should probably gain more than one yard. Like that was the, the fact. No, 19, we, we only needed. Nine more. We had we had a timeout. So, but we'll see. You know. Would you it, have thrown it if you got 
Right. We, we didn't. It's just a hypothetical. Last week, you guys said, last week you guys said when you were asked about Tannehill being healthy, being the starter, you said you would imagine that be the case. This week you're saying like you're going I'm to be I'm saying that I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you everything that I can tell you on Tuesday as it relates to the depth chart at quarterback, at tackle, at cornerback. Every, 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 it'll tell you everything that I can possibly tell you based on Ryan's health, based on the health of everybody else. I'm not, not willing to, to discuss hypotheticals when everybody gets back and who's available and who's not available. I will uh, – I'll update you. At quarterback, are you saying that it's I just told you what I was saying. Or? I said that when Ryan is healthy, I will have a decision for you. Do you think like that, that Will has been so aggressive about those downfield throws, or, or do you feel like at times he needs to maybe rein it in at all? No, at time, you know, we, we love him when we complete him, right? You guys like him when we complete him, but we don't like him when we don't complete him. And again, if it's, you know, if it's a favorable look, Take take a shot, and uh, you know because in that case it was it was trailing, and we liked the we liked the play, just like Pittsburgh liked the the shot, you know on third and six to to Deontay Johnson. Can you give us a sense? But some but not not making bad decisions uh, into to some some cover, some poor coverage looks. Did you think that Levis's throw on the ball that Spears fell down is why Spears fell down? Because you talked about needing to execute that play. But I don't understand how you're going to execute the play when the receiver falls down. Just got to hit it next time. Man. It's everybody's fault. It was we we didn't score. We we didn't score a touchdown. We didn't complete the pass. So it was uh, put it on the call. Put it on me. Put it on the quarterback. Put it on the running back. Put it put it on everybody. It was an incomplete pass. Had he made bad throws prior to you not letting him throw on the three downs on the second to last it, series? Um, no, he, he was, um, you know, everything was perfect. Every, everything was just spot on perfect, Paul. And I, uh, I made a decision. You guys disagree with it. And, uh, you know, that, that's the decision that I made that I felt like was best for our football team at the end of half. And, well, not you know, there in, the, in the second to last season. Um, Did you tell Tim not to throw there? Or is that Tim? Not no, we there? ran a ver reverse to Traylon. Um, Should have cracked the. Should have blocked the linebacker, uh, didn't. Traylon made a great individual effort to, to gain as many yards as he did. Um, so we were ahead of the chains. It was four down territory. Um, tried to, again, felt like giving Tajay an opportunity there uh, on third down. And then, you know, didn't, didn't hit the fourth down one. Can you, Mike, give us a sense of how, if any, what you're working with with your front five on the offensive line may or may not impact how you guys approach. I think it's call. just, it's too soon right now. You know, I mean, guys are still just getting MRIs and, you know, give Daniel Brunskill a lot of credit for, for competing and fighting through, um, you know, it, it's some sort of injury. Um, Nick couldn't finish. Uh, pretty much all of them went down for a snap or two, but uh, we'll, we'll know more here after this weekend. And, um, and how everybody's feeling, and, and again, where we feel like we could put guys that think Chris Hubbard uh, has a chance to, to practice and, and work his way through uh, concussion protocol. Did Murphy Bunning re aggravate the thumb, or he just thought he could, could go with it? Yeah, just probably both. Some of those uh, uh, depth chart moves, is it all in Oh, I don't know if they're moves. Point? I just said I'm going to update you guys after this so weekend. So primarily and not necessarily. Well, we only have so many guys. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll, again, if we feel like there's somebody that can that can help us, we'll try to to get them in there, whether they're on a practice squad or, you know, we we work them out or we bring them in there from from somewhere else. I think that we we got to look at everybody. Mike, nine games left in this season. Uh, you know, out of the five losses, only one was a blowout. Where do you think that this team is at this point? Thanks for uh, noticing, with Teresa. I'm sorry. I said thanks for noticing. Um, well, we are, uh, you know, halfway through and I thought, again, what I told the team, contrary to popular belief, but at halftime, I said, I said, we're back in a race, you know, we're back in a race and, uh, let's finish this half. Um, so we got some ground to make up, but you do it one game at a time. You do it one practice at a time. Um, you know, and I'm confident that we'll do that and.
you know, figure out a way to win on the road, which has um, has avoided us up until this point for for a number of reasons. Um, and you know, we just have to be a little bit better in all phases, a little cleaner. Um, you know, staying more efficient, turning the football over, getting some stops, and you know, being better in third down. And you know, given our our team, you know, we had a, a short field and you know, didn't capitalize. What makes you confident? do that when you've not consistently done it all season? Well, I've got belief in, in the players. I've got people uh, belief in, in, in the coaching staff to, to get guys uh, prepared. Um, you know, I don't think you know, I don't think it's effort. You know, I think with all the mistakes and everything else and then whatever else happens, you know, we just we play just good enough to, to make it close. So we have to, you know, eliminate the, the few plays. Seemed like every time they needed a play, they they made it. I talked about that last night, and uh, and we weren't uh, unfortunately able to. So, games are close. We understand that, and I think the way that we get we play, and our ability to compete, um, make them that way. Thanks, guys. I hope Thanks. you.